you want to know how learning a language can help you improve your mental health, then you need to hear this. My name is Ollie Richards, and after learning eight languages myself and teaching tens of thousands of students, I've experienced these incredible mental health benefits firsthand. But don't take my word for it. I've done my homework and read dozens of real life transformation stories, and the research is absolutely mind blowing. When you feel good, your brain is releasing one of the happy chemicals, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, or endorphin. These chemicals are not the whole picture, but they're a big part of it and your brain needs them to be balanced. In a mental health crisis, they are not balanced. They're all messed up. For example, depression has an awful way of making you feel small and lonely. But scientists say that learning a language is like medicine because it triggers the chemicals you need to feel happier. One reason is that when you get to the speaking part, it puts you on the most amazing high. And I know that feeling very, very well. Listen to what this French student just said. Just like with an interview or public speaking, I get a sort of relief high after speaking French. This effect can last for hours. The relief is similar to exercising. It sort of resets my mind and clears my thoughts. And conversation sessions are like my therapy sessions. A relief high. What an interesting thought. I feel like through learning a new language, I have kickstarted that dopamine reward system in my brain. And there are other ways language lessons can put you on a high. Each language is full of its own unique words and perspectives that can get you thinking differently about yourself and about life. And that is exciting. The Japanese have a saying, mono no aware. It is a way of describing a special kind of feeling you get when you realize how beautiful and fragile life is. For example, in the spring, uh, the Japanese people really appreciate the cherry blossoms blooming. When they bloom, their prime time is so brief. And so that is when the Japanese feels a monono hour. And learning a language really opens your heart up to a lot more beautiful things that your own culture might be missing. But can language learning affect the brain's actual structure and function? Because I heard a rumor about outsmarting aging and that got my attention. Everybody's brain is actually working against what they think it's there to do. The brain is the only part of your body that's both an organ and a muscle. As an organ, it does things automatically. You have no control over it, just like you can't control your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidney. As a muscle, that means it can grow and it can also atrophy. Mm. And you have full control over whether it grows or whether it atrophies. Wow, well, I don't want my brain to atrophy. One of our biggest fears about aging is losing our memory. So they did these tests on older people in various countries and the ones who spoke more than one language had better memories and, listen to this, they got dementia on average five years later than monolinguals. I personally will take those extra five years, thank you very much. Got some things to do. Let's hit the steel! When you speak different languages, you're forcing your brain to use a lot of energy, and in the long run, this can actually make it get better at protecting itself. Did you know a bilingual brain even recovers faster from injury? That's right, it's because your brain's functions to do with language can move from damaged to undamaged areas, which is pretty amazing. But that's not all that happens. This study found that bilingual individuals had more gray matter in an area of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. And so if we are a survivor of trauma or severe stress, then our brain is going to want to sort it out. It's going to want to gather information and try to make sense of it so that it can build an action plan for the future. Cognitive flexibility is how well your brain switches gears when plans change. If something unplanned happens, can you roll with it? Yes? No? I know it's going to be far more challenging for some of you, but if you want to get great at switching gears, you need to put yourself in unusual situations. Don't always take the easy route home. Try new experiences, new cultures, and definitely learn a new language. That one's like superfood for your brain. But this next part absolutely blows my mind. Our brains are naturally wired to search for patterns and meaning, so even listening to a language you don't understand activates your brain's language centers. <laughs> Guess what? Right now, your brain tried to figure that out. Your brain is always looking for clues. What an awesome, inspiring way to ditch the blues. By the way, if you feel like you're no good at languages, just try another way to learn. Don't give in to the lies. It's all about the method you choose. Try taking a browse through my channel if you need some inspiration, because if you're not learning a language, you're missing out on a powerful mental health booster. And if you're enjoying this video and want to see more, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, and also the notification bell. That way, you won't miss any of the exciting videos we have in the pipeline. 70% of employers prefer individuals who can speak a second language. So the first reason is confidence, the second is fluency, and the third is the fact that they believe 
that the stigma is associated to their home language. So what do you do when things feel really bad, really heavy, and you know you need to talk to someone, but you're too scared to? You want to hear this story. There was a big study on Chinese people with mental health problems, both immigrants in the US and people in China. Funny thing is, they were more receptive to getting help if it was suggested in English not in their native language, so why would that be? Well, in some more traditional cultures, it's not so easy to ask for help. There's a lot of stigma attached to that. Mental health or distress just isn't openly discussed, so they have all these emotional barriers to deal with first, and it's very, very hard. Expressing emotional distress is hard for anybody, right? So what's a good way to make therapy seem more acceptable? You present the information that the person needs in their second language, and suddenly it seems less scary. And this means the language we use is super important in the way we think about our mental health. So yeah, the language overlap is quite amazing news. I was reading a journal called Language and Health, and listen to this. It says that mental health specialists are actually turning to linguists now to collaborate in understanding these disorders. Can you believe that? It's pretty cool. It's good to know if you're a therapist, social worker, hey, even a friend. Almost sounds like we get a bit of a personality change in the second language. What do you guys think? If you could step into a different version of yourself, would you more easily ask for help? Let me know in the comments and hold that thought because there's another calming superpower hiding in plain sight. Sometimes the news can make it seem like the whole world is going to hell in a handbasket. It's a rubbish feeling, isn't it? I go through these times of completely just wanting to switch everything off, don't you? But that's just the thing. We shouldn't switch off from everyone, just filter what we let in. Mental health is mostly about relating to others in a more positive way, minimizing fear and all the other things that make us, can make us feel small. And guess what? Languages can help you do this. They open up a whole world of gorgeous new things that other cultures offer, new traditions, books, movies, songs, and so on. And when you immerse yourself in this new culture, it challenges your assumptions and brings out your empathy. And when you can get better at understanding other people's pain, the ripple effect is, well, you don't feel so small anymore. Most people who suffer from anxiety feel like they're inadequate in some way. In reality, they are hyper-adequate. They are more than adequate. Anxiety is a superpower. Too much information and obligation causes big stress, and sometimes you just need to hit the mental reset button. You know what I mean? That's why this next part is so good. While you're engaging with a new language, you get a mental break from the kinds of intrusive thoughts and worries that can make you anxious in the first place. You know the usual culprits? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You got them, I've got them, we've all got them. How does it work? Well, it's not that complicated. The annoying things that usually trigger you every day are probably happening in your home language. We have relations there between the language and the thing. And switching languages helps to filter out that noise. So you get pretty good at focusing on what matters. Want a helpful little tip? Usually if you're battling anxiety, it's better to have a structured routine with your language learning. It can help you feel more in control. And once you get past the beginner stage and actually start speaking and communicating, it gets even better. How's this interesting thing a lot of my students have noticed? Even their social anxiety disappears in another language. And if you've ever wanted to try learning a language in a more fun way, then you should check out story learning because story learning is what you do when you've tried everything else and you're finally ready to learn a new language. It's a very different way of learning, and we've taught tens of thousands of students using this method. And with story learning, it's really quite simple. You learn a language using stories, not rules, and it works like a bomb because the language sticks in your head more easily, just kind of like the way songs get stuck in your head, you know? That's what stories do. It's really quite a new way of learning, and it can help you learn faster and with less stress. If you'd like to find out more about this, you can get a free tour of the method. Just look for my story learning kit in the video description below. There's a link to click that will take you to the right place, or you can scan this lovely QR code if you're watching on your TV. Now, let's see a new way to ditch those loneliness blues. Language learning in particular has these special qualities that have been really impactful for me with my mental health. One of them for me is that by their very nature, right, learning languages is inherently about people, right? To some degree, it's about communicating with others. It's about sharing experiences with other people. Feeling isolated or lonely can be a real downer, especially if you're struggling with your mental health and even us introverts need to connect with others sometimes. When the pandemic hit, over 30 million new people joined Duolingo, 30 million. Why? Because everyone realized we'd be feeling very lonely. I didn't realize how um, bad it would get. As it got longer, I started to miss my friends and my family and it got harder from there because um, 
We couldn't really communicate or see each other. There were some surveys to find out what everyone's motivation was for signing up to learn a new language in 2020. And you know what most people said? They did it to connect. Something about chatting with a person going through the same exact isolation in Japan or Bali or Norway, it was comforting. It makes sense, right? In China, there was a 300% spike in language learners. But all right, pandemic's over. Can these long distance chats still help? Well, I'm glad you asked, and yes, they can. Look at us busy chatting here. There are endless ways you can connect through language learning. Learning these languages, it was always so comforting and helpful to know that I was doing things that were gonna allow me to have a vast number of wonderful experiences in the future whenever that time came. So it's always kept me just looking to the future, focusing on positive things. One thing I love is a language exchange because there's a nice, healthy give and take. You help each other out, you improve your skills together. It's a, it's a win-win. Look, when you're feeling down, chances are your confidence is low and everything feels too hard. I, I get it. But learning a new language can be a real game changer. This one's actually pretty cool if you're struggling to feel like you have value because by helping someone learn your native language, you get that helper's high feeling if you like. It's good for the soul. And speaking of highs, here's a question for you. Could learning a new language be the exhilarating challenge your brain craves to fight off the blues and unlock your full potential? Well, maybe. Check this out. Give your brain something to focus on. why some people crave extreme sports. Okay, I'm gonna paint a picture here because we've forgotten this. A long time ago, humans had to fend off wild animals and enemies and always be solving puzzles for survival. You know, your ancient brain is wired for challenges of the hard kind. It desperately wants them. When depression or anxiety have a grip on you, your brain needs something challenging to focus on. And here's my idea. Think of language learning as an extreme sport for your brain. It demands focus, problem solving, perseverance. And what's the reward? Well, I'll tell you, your mind's gonna feel sharper, happy, and more resilient. On the other hand, what if the thing you need most is to wind down? Could languages help an overwhelmed brain? Well, I'm glad you asked again. Grab your yoga mats. Ever get so lost in something that everything else disappears and time just flies by? Well, that feeling is called flow, and this state of flow is a huge part of what makes people happy. It gives positive emotions and can lead to, well, can lead to a better life. So how do you find flow? Can language learning be a way to tap into it? Absolutely. The cool thing about learning a new language is how it can totally absorb you. It's something fresh and exciting and keeps you on your toes. There is no time for fixating on irrelevant things. Your mind is in the language, you're fully present, worries fade away, and you feel good. You feel a sense of achievement. The trick is finding that sweet spot where you're challenged but not overwhelmed. So you need to pick a language you're genuinely curious about uh, and a method that promotes that. That's what we try and do at Story Learning, really, this gap between, between learning and enjoyment and immersion and all these different things. In fact, there was a study about this and they found that the more motivated and curious a person is about a particular language, the more likely they are to get deeply involved in their studies and experience a state of flow. I certainly remember when I was in my language learning heyday in my 20s, I would just lose myself for hours and hours in my room just like reading books on languages, trying to memorize things, grammar, conversation. I mean, I would just forget that time existed. I mean, granted, I didn't have much else to do back then, but you get the point. So yes, language learning can be a perfect way to calm your mind and just be in the moment. Some people even use it as a form of meditation. By focusing lots of our time and attention on learning something, it has this effect of making us think a lot about the future, right? Spending a lot of time daydreaming and thinking about that thing that we want to do eventually after we learn this skill. And so it's a really good way to just keep us looking forwards and spending a lot of time thinking about this positive thing that we want to do versus dwelling in the present or certainly the past. Language learning isn't just about communication. It's a weapon for healing and empowerment. I'm not kidding. Imagine someone battling PTSD. Every day they face an internal struggle. What do they need? Well, they need a way to build resilience, get into calmer waters and rewrite their story. And I totally believe learning a language can give them this. So language is your weapon. What are the victories. Well, it's easy. Every new word you learn, every grammar rule you conquer, the first time you're brave enough to speak to someone, they're all victories. It's proof to yourself that you can come out stronger. And who wouldn't want that? The best win is if you can get a chance 
to travel because traveling can wake you up and when you know some of the language too, it gives you a huge dose of confidence. But the best part, wait until you see this language that you've been learning being used in real life. It's, it's fascinating, it feels amazing. Now, speaking of rewriting stories, this is something you have to hear. There's a new study out on bilingual people and if you are A, bilingual and B, emotional, this is for you. You may be less likely to be impacted by emotional words in your second language. And that's according to a new study from researchers at a Polish university who did some experiments on 47 Polish women because they think if processing information in a second language means less emotional attachment, could therapy in a patient's second language help them if this is useful to distance themselves from a traumatic event? This is powerful stuff. If you ever experienced trauma or abuse or regret or feeling like a failure, you might be tormented by voices from the past echoing around in your head. The one tip is to write down your feelings in the language that you're learning instead of in English or your native language. You'll be amazed at how much less it actually starts to get to you. Famous authors have written entire books in a second or third language just to be able to get the words out. And check these out. I highly recommend you go buy diary today and make one rule. No first language allowed. But what if I told you there's another genius way to shut those voices up? Learning a language can give you the feeling that you can achieve anything. I've often felt this after tackling some tough languages myself. You get a sense of accomplishment that's so different from anything you've done before. You're going to feel very mighty and as you should as well but also there's a lot of pleasure to get from engaging in a new culture it's very rewarding and the best benefit of all if you ask me next thing your self-esteem goes through the roof because you you did this difficult thing you did it you learned another language for goodness sake and that's huge remember my question about those pesky voices from the past that try to haunt us well guess what they don't pop up in our new languages they can't really our memories of hurtful things people said or whatever are trapped in the language they happened in. I'm not saying you'll ditch them forever, you do still speak English or your mother tongue after all, but those voices don't know these new alien grammar structures and weird words. If you think about it, it's quite astonishing. But what if you want to connect with a far more ancient past? I'm talking about your own ancestors. Bear with me, I'm not crazy. In Australia, there's a professor who's a legend around there. He's been working to bring back dead Aboriginal languages. Languages nobody speaks anymore. Can you imagine? You're a wonderer. How are you all? My name is Lillian Bowen. I am a Bindiwara person. And because of it, in these communities where they suddenly have a chance to learn the old languages, the rates of alcoholism, addiction, diabetes, depression, and suicide just plummeted. So good to hear these kind of stories. You see, when people can connect to their roots by learning their ancestral languages, it lifts a heavy weight and it can have a profound effect on the mind. Here's an idea for you to try. What language did your ancestors speak? If you don't already speak it, well, go and dabble in the language. Why not? See what it does for your heart. I bet it's going to feel quite special. I love it when people whose first language is not English write lyrics in English. Agreed. Yeah. I Such love it. Yes! I would have yes. never drawn that. <laughs> Maybe that's what makes it so good is that the lyrics are so bizarre and so in your face. And also kind of secondary. Yes. They're secondary to everything else. But then when you read them, you're like, She's singing about an orca whale. Yeah. <laughs> Who are they talking about? Well, when you're feeling gloomy, your brain secretly craves something energizing and being creative is very, very energizing. If you think of creativity as a web of connections in your mind, linking different sounds, words, and even cultural perspectives, that's where we get the spark for art, music, writing, even problem solving. All that's on TV, it just goes directly into your brain and you stop judging if it's right or not. So you just swallow and swallow. This is what an Icelandic poet told me once. But then later on, when I got my Danish book on television, I read the truth, the scientific truth, which is much better. You shouldn't let poets lie to you. And when you learn a language, it's not just about memorizing words and grammar. You're also learning how another culture sees the world, and that can spark all sorts of creativity in you. You're tapping into a whole different universe of ideas. Sounds good, don't you think? And you What's brilliant about the Icelandic musician Björg is that she doesn't care if her language isn't perfect. She writes really bizarre songs in English, her third language, and even when the lyrics seem odd to us English natives, she's having the time of her life being a creative genius. I'm not saying learning a new language will magically turn you into Björg, or I don't know, Frida Kahlo overnight, but it can definitely help you think outside the box. By the way, do you have any bad habits you fancy crushing? For Christmas break, I was particularly lonely and for whatever reason, Spanish just came to my rescue. And it was really, it, it was like a friend coming and just saying, let's go through this 
this period together. What bad habits would you love to crush? Well, I'll tell you a few. Skipping the gym, for example. Watching too much TV, because I just want an escape. The occasional dram, perhaps. Well, guess what I think? I think the most important thing language learning does is it provides a healthy escape. Escaping with a good book in Portuguese? Now we're talking. And if you're really gonna crush bad habits, let your language get you up early. Hit the tar in your running shoes, run, walk, get moving with your earphones playing the latest Italian podcast or whatever. Ciao a tutti. And there you go, you've worked out your body and your brain and your happy hormones are going wild. And combining activities is always a great way to up the amount of language learning you're doing. Have you heard the buzz about the big five personality traits? Well, if you click in this video over here, you can find out exactly how learning a new language can give you an entirely new personality. It's fascinating stuff. And when you see how it works, you're gonna be mighty surprised.